I've spent the last two weeks wearing two of the top smart rings on the market, the Rincon Gen 2 and the Ultrahuman Ring Air. Both promise cutting-edge health tracking, no subscriptions, and sleek all-day comfort. But in day-to-day -day use, the differences were a little bit more obvious than I expected. So, if you're like me, that is to say, trying to choose between the two, stick around. This Rincon vs. Ultrahuman breakdown might just surprise you. Before we dive in, just a quick heads up. I've left links in the description with exclusive discounts on both of these smart rings just for Health News viewers. You'll also see QR codes on screen throughout the video, so feel free to scan and grab the best deal while you watch. Let's start with the basics, fit and finish. Both brands ship a free sizing kit first, so you can test plastic molds before the real ring arrives. It's dead simple with the Rincon Gen 2. The Ultra Human Ring Air works the same way, but it ships only in whole sizes, which can be tricky if your finger lands between two numbers. Material-wise, Gen 2 uses aerospace-grade titanium alloy, lightweight and insanely tough. Ultra Human uses a titanium alloy with a tungsten carbide carbon coating, so it looks and feels like something milled out of a turbine blade. Gen 2 comes in an assortment of color schemes, Future Silver, Royal Gold, Rose Gold, and Matte Black, and it nabbed an IF Design Award for that finish. My test unit is the Matte Black version. The Ultra Human Smart Ring offers Aster Black, Matte Gray, Bionic Gold, Raw Titanium, brand new brushed rose gold, and the Space Silver model in my hand. Both look sharp, but Ultra Human's tungsten coat adds a darker, almost ceramic sheen. Inside, each ring uses a medical-grade hypoallergenic epoxy lining, smooth on the skin with no pinching. Also, here are some stats at a glance. First, the weight. Gen 2 ranges between 2 and 3 grams, whereas Ultra Human is a gram heavier. Thickness? Gen 2 is just 2 millimeters wide and Ultra Human a half millimeter wider. Now, on paper, that extra half millimeter sounds minor, but you feel it if you type a lot or use your grip a lot. And what's more? Oh yes, the waterproofing parameters. Both smart rings are rated for 100 meters of water resistance, so showers, swims, even surf sessions are all fair game. After real-world use of both rings, I will say that Gen 2 definitely goes the most unnoticed. Its sleek and small design just disappears on the finger. Now, the Ultra Human isn't in the way or bothersome, it's just more there, more noticeable on the hand. However, it does feel more durable and sturdier than the Gen 2, which is a nice feeling in and of itself, and that probably has to do because it's just a little bit thicker. The Gen 2 doesn't smudge much, but it does get a few scratches after a workout. However, they do rub off and seem to just disappear. I remember after my first workout with the Gen 2, I was disappointed because I thought there was a permanent scratch from the barbell, but it ended up rubbing away. So both are durable and hold up well in the real world. If you're comparing the Ultra Human Ring Air versus the Rincon Gen 2, don't miss the exclusive discounts I've linked in the description, plus a QR code right here on screen. Both offer serious value. No subscriptions, premium builds, and battery life that would even put most smartwatches to shame. Battery life is one area where the difference is pretty dramatic. The Rincon Gen 2 gave me a solid 10 to 12 days per charge. And that portable charging case? Let me tell you, that extends the battery life to over 150 days without needing a wall outlet. Seriously impressive for traveling. And the charging itself takes only about 90 minutes or so. On the other hand, the Ultra Human Ring Air lasted me around four to six days, and it takes about three hours to recharge on its magnetic USB-C dock. I'll show both chargers side by side here. Personally, you can't help but love the Gen 2's battery life and charging case over the Ultra Humans or lack thereof. For example, I found myself charging the Ultra Human Ring way more often, and that charging case on the Rincon, definitely a game changer for people who forget to plug things in like I do. Now let's look at the Rincon and Ultra Human app side by side to see the data, insights, and metrics that they give us and how they give them to us. All right, so here I have the Rincon app open, and the first thing I wanna go over is the sleep tracking. So right here on the homepage, sleep is the second section that they give us. As you can see, it says sleep, seven hours and six minutes, and then it has the number 78 with a purple circle around it. So let's click into sleep. And if we scroll down, we can take a look at our REM, light, 
and deep sleep stages. And if we continue to scroll down the sleep section, I can see my heart rate throughout the night. My average BPM was 61 throughout this night's rest. If I continue down, we have my heart rate variability. My average was 54. And my SpO2, we can see my average as a 98. Says during sleep, the overall blood oxygen trend is normal. See, that's good information. For SpO2, it says that my overall blood oxygen trend is normal. However, for HRV and my heart rate throughout the night, it's not really telling me if that's generally good, generally bad. Am I in an appropriate area for my age? It's just the numbers. You know what I mean? Then as we scroll down, we also have skin temperature and respiratory rate. And one thing I will give credit to this app for is their nap detection, which I do take maybe at least one a day or one every other day. The Ultra Human app asks if you took a nap, like it will kind of detect it, but you need to confirm it. Uh, the Rincon app just automatically knows, yeah, this dude took a nap. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, one thing I do want to show you that is unique to the Rincon Gen 2 is the sleep apnea monitoring, which we can see right here. And if we click into that, it'll give me an AHI score, which basically it's telling me no abnormalities detected. So as of right now, my AHI score is a 0.6. Now here, unlike the sleep section, it is giving me some health advice, which is really nice. Now I'm not gonna read the full paragraph to you. You can pause and read it yourself if you would like to, but throughout this whole section, it will give us a AHI score history record. Basically, we can see a trend over weeks, months, and years um, for as long as we've been wearing the ring. Now back on the homepage, another thing I want to show you is vital signs. This is where we can see different um, insights into my body, such as heart rate over time. We can see my SpO2 over time and my heart rate variability over time, along with other information such as skin temperature and respiratory rate. But if we look at, let's say, SpO2, for example, or my heart rate, if I click on those two expanding arrows in the corner, it'll put this graph in landscape mode and I can sort of see how it was throughout the day. And I can go back in time and look at different days as well. Back to the homepage. Now let's go over the stress section. As you can see, it says stress, normal, peace and joy. Okay, cool. I should be feeling peace and joy right now, apparently according to the Rincon app. If I click into that, let's see what this means. Now this says latest HRV, daily average HRV. As you can see, in some places it gives me information, in some places it doesn't. It says generally high HRV indicates a better state. So that's good, that's good to know. And if we scroll down just a bit, it gives me an all day stress index. So like it just said, a higher HRV indicates a better state, a less stressed state. And now if we look at the bottom here, it says early morning, morning, afternoon, and evening. Early morning and morning, I seem to be stressed. Maybe that's due to high cortisol in the morning, which is natural, but in the afternoon and evening, my HRV score is higher, which is good. That's a good thing. See, this is useful information here because it's telling me what I should know. If we scroll down a little bit more, it also tells me my sleeping stress before sleep is good and during sleep is excellent. So that's good to know. It's very clear. Hey, here you're doing good. Here you're doing excellent. Here you need improvement. That's some things that I would like the Rincon app to do a little bit more of. And that's something that the Ultra Human app is really good at, which I'll show you in a second. Now that doesn't mean this app is bad. Like I said, it's a very good app, very useful information. I would just like it to be a little bit more helpful with reading the insights and the data. One thing a lot of people use, uh, you know, health tech products like smartwatches and these rings for are their activity. So today thus far, if I click into the activity tab, it tells me I've done a little over 5,500 steps, burned about 500 calories and had about an hour or so of activity. And if I scroll down, it'll give me graphs and timestamps of when I was the most active, of when I was burning the most calories, uh, you know, when I was standing, sort of things that you would just expect to see um, in a product like this, like a smartwatch or a smart ring. Um, very just easy to read information here and easily in your face. No hard criticism here at all with the Rincon app. Now at the bottom middle of the screen, there is this AI button. If I click that, 
this is where I can see a history of the health alerts and health tips that it's pushed to my device or things that it's been wanting to tell me. At the most recent one was my nap. It said, nap is over. I can click on sleep details and it'll bring me back to the sleep page where I can then scroll down and look at my nap. These alerts can be very helpful and fun to look at, especially the fact that there's a history of them. It's nice to go back and see sort of how the app has been trying to help you evolve yourself and help yourself be more healthy. Now let's take a look at the Ultra Human app to see my metrics, data, and insights on the Ultra Human Ring Air and how it gives me that information. Now, right off the bat, if you look side by side from the RingCon app and the Ultra Human app, like I've said earlier, the Ultra Human app is just a little bit more fun to look at. Like, I get excited to check this app. So let's go over some similar metrics. First being sleep tracking, which is at the top of the dashboard on the Ultra Human app. Now, one piece of context I want to give you is that green means good, yellow means mid, and red means bad. So the fact that my sleep section is in green already automatically, without reading anything, tells me I did pretty good that night. Then it gives me a score of 83 and it says meteoric rise. More sleep equals better, better energy levels. Good information, I like to see that. And on the dashboard, it tells me my sleep duration and how many sleep cycles, full sleep cycles I had, along with a graph, a white line of when I was awake and asleep. Right on the dashboard, I can just see and get more information about whatever insight or, or section I'm looking at without having to dive into that section, which makes this app automatically a winner over the Rincon app, in my opinion. So now, if I go ahead and click into the sleep section, right away, I can see at the top sort of a trend over that week or for however long I've been wearing the ring. As you can see, some nights like uh, on June 28th, I got a 47, which is really, really bad. Now, what's really interesting about this and the other insights that it gives us at the bottom, such as restfulness, consistency, timing, and all that jazz, is that it tells us right away whether that's good, great, optimal, or needs attention. That is what I want to see with information. This is useful. It's not just numbers on a screen. It's actually telling me something. Now, for example, 5 a.m. heart rate drop needs attention. Why would that need attention? How can I fix it? Help me out. I click on it right away. Tips to improve it further. And then it gives me, you know, little blurbs of how I can improve my sleep or my heart rate drop. And at the bottom, it tells me why my heart rate drop is important for sleep or why that metric even matters, which is very important. I want to know this stuff. And if I scroll down even further, I can see my REM, light, and deep sleep stages. Now the next section down, we have dynamic recovery, which is a recovery score that I got an 88 on this day. And we can see at the bottom, resting heart rate, temperature, and heart rate variability all got green checks this day. If I check or click into this section, it'll tell me different contributors to my overall recovery score. My skin temperature, my seven day HRV, last night's HRV, my sleep index, my stress rhythm score. It's giving me everything that it's factoring into how I'm supposed to feel this day or how my body is responding, I should say. And again, very easy to read, very easy to scroll through. And if I need any information, I can simply click on it and it'll give me more information about what I'm looking at right there without having to do too many taps. Now, as I scroll down on the dashboard, I can see individual markers and vital signs, such as my heart rate, my temperature deviation, and my skin temperature, my heart rate variability, my cardio age, my VO2 max, my resting heart rate, and all this other information. So let's say I wanted to look at my VO2 max a little more in depth, which is essentially your cardio fitness. I can click on VO2 max, and it's gonna say that my cardio age is 35. So it has my VO2 max score, it has my resting heart rate at the bottom under that, has my HRV under that, and as you can see it says good, elite, fair, like it tells me where I'm standing with these numbers amongst other men in my age group. Now, just like we covered with the Rincon app, let's talk about movement and your steps and your calories. That's under the movement section on the Ultra Human app. As you can see, it gave me a 65 for this day. Now, this day, I only got 1,100 steps in, 
total calories burned 1800 so that's why the color is yellow very visually appealing and easy to understand without even having to read anything yet like i said earlier if i click into that it'll show me the steps that i took the total calories burned which are my active and resting burned calories um, timing and frequencies when i was active sort of the same general information the Rincon app gives us just in a different form so easy to read easy to see i can click into anything and it'll give me a little bit more information and a little bit of a trend of my numbers over time which is nice to see now one thing i do want to say in favor of the Rincon app is that ai alerts button because the ultra human app does send me alerts throughout the day it tells me hey you're a little stressed why don't you try taking a breath it says hey you've been sitting for a while why don't you go for a little bit of a walk or do some stretching uh, it tells me that i should start winding down in the evening so that i have a better night's rest like it sends me those notifications but i can't see a history of them with that ai uh, health insight button on the Raincon app i can see the history of the alerts that it given that it's been giving me and that's really nice to see and i really do appreciate that so there are pros and cons to each app let me put it this way my final honest opinion sort of on the app and on the apps themselves i wish that the Raincon gen 2 ring could pair with the ultra human app that would be an ideal perfect world for me because I much more enjoy the Ultra Human app than I do the Rincon app. Overall, basically both apps give you the same data and metrics aside from the sleep apnea detection with Rincon. It's just the Ultra Human is funner to look at and gives you more insights or at least the insights are easier to access and more in your face. Now, of course, no smart ring or piece of tech is perfect. And after wearing both, I definitely noticed some trade-offs. With the Rincon Gen 2, sleep apnea detection is an exciting feature, but it's not FDA approved, so you should treat it more as an early warning than an actual clinical diagnosis. Fitness-wise, it's a bit basic. There's no workout mode, no automatic detection, and I didn't get detailed activity graphs like I would on a full smartwatch. As for the Ultra Human Ring Air, the shorter battery life definitely stood out. I had to charge it about every four to six days, like I said. And if you're using the power plug for extra features like AFib detection or detailed cycle tracking, that adds more cost and more stuff to manage. Also, its slightly thicker profile made it feel a bit bulkier, like I mentioned, especially compared to the Rincon. And since it's only available in whole sizes, it might be trickier to find the perfect fit if you're in between sizes. So, after wearing both rings side by side, here is my honest take. The Rincon Gen 2 is your go-to if you want long battery life, a sleek, low-profile design, and sleep apnea insights without worrying about subscriptions or add-ons. It's incredibly hands-off, no pun intended. Just charge it once every 10 days or toss it in the charging case and forget about it for months. On the other hand, the Ultra Human Ring Air takes the cake if you want more curated health summaries, like recovery score, movement index, and sleep index. And if you're into women's health tracking or AFib detection, the power plug add-ons unlock all of that. Just know you'll need to charge it a bit more often. I've linked both options in the description with exclusive health news discounts, and you can scan the QR code on screen for the best deal right now. That wraps up this hands-on comparison. And don't forget, more smart health tech reviews drop every single week right here on Health News. My name is Steven, and I will see you in the next one.